Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Well, you guys asked for it, so we're going to do it tonight, okay? And uh, this will be premiering tomorrow morning, Saturday at 8 a.m. So if you're here, thank you for joining in. And let's get started, okay? So we are going to make today Dominican rice the way that I've been doing it for years, okay? In case there are some Dominicans out there that watch this video, this is how I do it, okay? Everyone does it a little bit different, but this is how I do it, okay? There are some ingredients that traditionally are not used that I like to use. Okay, so we're going to start off right quick because this rice is going to take anywhere between 25 to 30 minutes. I like to do it a little bit on the longer side, so more like 30 minutes to cook after we're done prepping it. So uh, in between while it's cooking I've got some other things that I like to talk about and also we're gonna be shouting out our new subscribers today since I didn't do it on the video that's premiering on Sunday so we're gonna go ahead and shout out the new subscribers today if there's any new subscribers here that I shout out go ahead and uh, give us a thumbs up so that we know that you're in the in the chat room alright so hopefully you guys have had a great weekend it's Friday evening here today so I just got home a few minutes ago uh, change into my comfortable clothes and we're ready to start so ladies and gentlemen let me start off by saying this I don't measure okay so if you all want to replicate what I'm doing here take some notes because I really don't have a recipe for you okay because I don't really measure I've been making this rice for a very long time and it's pretty much second nature okay so let's start it off. I'm going to go ahead and switch the computer so that you can take a look at the pot that I have here. And what we're doing today is we're making a two cup dish. So there's going to be two cups of rice in this dish. All right. So this is what goes in it. I'm going to go ahead and switch the computer over so that you guys can see the pot. And then I'll walk you through what we're doing. All right. So hopefully you can see the pot there and what's going on. Let me reach over here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to start off with some oil. Okay, now you can use any kind of oil that you like. And for the haters, don't criticize that I'm using. There's actually some, I ran out of olive oil. I actually still have some olive oil put away. But I put some corn oil in here, all right, after I ran out. Because this is the oil that I use to make Dominican rice. Okay, you can use any kind of oil you want. Corn oil is what I grew up eating as far as my mom cooking rice and Dominican rice. Okay, so that's what I use. All right, and you'll be able to see about how much I put in there. If I had to measure, I'd say probably about three tablespoons to four tablespoons of oil. Okay, now when I put that oil in there, I'm going to turn my burner on. Okay, and I'm going to turn my burner on probably medium high. All right, because I want that oil to start getting pretty hot pretty quick because what we're going to do is we're going to try to get our it's called sofrito all right in the Dominican Republic and I believe in the Puerto Rican culture as well it's called sofrito and what this is is kind of like the base the seasoning base to this rice and to a lot of different dishes that are made in a Hispanic culture now you can buy sofrito in the store probably in your latin area or your cultural area whatever they may call it in your supermarket but they sell it uh and it's like red it comes like in a red paste i like to make my own because i like to make it as i'm doing it a lot of people make a big batch of it and they freeze it and then they take out pieces as they need it that way it's easier for them to uh be able to cook a meal when they come home from work you know late at night and they want to cook a quick meal they've already got that done but I like to make my own every time that I make it. Okay, so my oil is already starting to get hot. So once my oil starts to get hot, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on low. All right, and then I'm going to start off. I'm going to first put in my legumes. And the reason I'm saying legumes is, is because you can make this rice with any bean that you want. All right, you can make it with pinto beans. You can make it with uh, red beans. All right. Uh, I like to use what are called green pigeon peas, all right? These are called green, green pigeon peas, all right? In Spanish, they call it gandules, 
all right these are gondolas all right and this is the first thing i'm going to throw in here now i remove the i remove the liquid from here before i put it in here all right so that's the first thing let me go ahead and get i'm going to put that in there and when i put that in there ladies and gentlemen i turn my heat to almost to the lowest setting all right so what i'm doing now is first of all if you leave it on the high setting the moisture that's in the piece it can splash all over okay so i put my heat close to the lower setting and then i'm going to stir this around a little bit all righty and what i do is is i put in all of my dry ingredients first meaning after i put these peas in here these gandulas in here I am going to put in my dry ingredients first, okay? So, normally you would want to use fresh onions. However, some of my family members, some of the uh, Alaska Prepper family members, don't like the pieces of onions in there, but the flavor, they don't, they, they agree with the flavor, just not the pieces of onions. So, I get a little bit of onion powder, and I just sprinkle it in there. All right, if I, and if I had to guess, this is probably about one tablespoon. Okay, so we're done with that. Then I'm going to put a little bit of black pepper in there. Black, uh, the black pepper, I would say that there's probably a full teaspoon of black pepper in there. And normally, ladies and gentlemen, I don't even use a spoon like this like I'm showing you. I'm just trying to gauge about how much it is. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, what's this? We need some adobo. Without adobo, it's not... Dominican rice okay so the adobo I'm not gonna take this lid off I'm gonna try to guesstimate about how much I'm gonna guesstimate about a tablespoon and a half or so of adobo all right even though adobo is delicious uh, you don't want to put too much in there because then it's gonna overpower it especially if you're only making a two cup dish okay so stir that around in there a little bit. Now normally, the types of peppers that we use, normally, my mother used to call them Italian peppers. I have no idea if they're Italian, but they're not the, they are not the bell peppers. They're the peppers that are uh, like elongated. They look like banana peppers. I'm not sure if that's what they're called, but those are normally what we use. Here, I like to use the Austin Farms peppers that are dehydrated. These work great in this dish. And you don't have to hydrate them ahead of time, okay? And I get probably about a half a handful of those, okay? Actually, let me go ahead and throw a little pinch in there because, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't had these, you need to go and check these out. These are delicious. You, the value that you get from one of these cans I think the last time I checked, one of these cans was like $12, $13. But man, it comes stuffed with peppers. It's almost full to the top with dehydrated peppers. If I had to guess, there's probably about 50 peppers crammed in here. And, and they have a great smell and they also taste good. And like I said, you don't have to rehydrate them because the water that you use in here is going to do that for you. Okay? All right. And then the next thing that we're going to use, this is also another awesome thing to have. It's the powdered uh, tomatoes, all right? The powdered tomato works great. Instead of using tomato paste, which is normally what I would put in here, I'm just going to put in a heaping, I would say, tablespoon of tomato, tomato powder. And that ought to do it right there. So you're going to go ahead and let that work a little bit. Let me put these up so they won't be in the way. And ladies and gentlemen, if you want to put other stuff in there, like maybe some uh, celery or things like that, it's not going to hurt, okay, if you do that. All right, so I'm not sure if you've ever heard of capers, but capers is something that we use a lot, and that's something we put in there. It's got a strong taste, okay, so you don't want to use an awful lot. Uh, normally, if we probably put about one tablespoon in there, that should be good. And I also like to put a little bit of the juice in there. Okay. So we got some capers in there. Some olives. 
okay? And I, like I said, I like to put a juice in there too, so. And I like olives, so I probably put about half of this jar in there. And I throw a little bit of that juice in there because it gives it a lot of flavor, okay? So let me go ahead and grab a powder. Okay, you see this is starting, it, it, it's starting to get really hot, but don't be afraid if it starts, starts to, uh, I don't want to say burn, because what we want to do with this is we want to get this thing almost to where it's burning, all right? When you do that, it brings all of those flavors together really well. All right, so this is almost going to be like a mush almost, all right? But believe it or not, the peas, they will keep their shape, okay? Just don't mush them, you know, fold them onto each other, okay? So there we go. So then we're going to put a little bit of garlic. And you can use powdered garlic too if you like. There's nothing wrong with using powdered garlic. Probably about a tablespoon is what I would say there's in there. Okay, so we've got all of our wet ingredients in there and our dry ingredients. With the exception of, I like to add a little bit of roasted red bell peppers. Okay, These roasted red bell peppers are really good. They have a great flavor and they add another layer of flavor to this dish. Okay. So that right there is pretty much our sofrito, if you want to call it that, all right? So you pretty much made sofrito. Oh, I, actually, I have one more ingredient I got to put in here that I almost forgot. It's also another important ingredient. You can pretty much call this sofrito with the exception that a real sofrito will not have the peas in there, all right? They'll have all of the ingredients besides the peas. So I forgot another ingredient which you can add as much as you want. Oh, let me put this in here. Sazon Goya, okay? Sazon Goya, let me show you what the box looks like in case you guys want to grab some. Oh, let's see. Okay. Some people like to put oregano in here too. I don't put it in here because my... Uh, my family, they don't, they don't really like that taste too much. But this is what Sazon Goya looks like. This is a must. Okay, without this, that's not going to be Dominican rice. And then, of course, I need to add a little bit of salt. Don't add too much because if it needs some later on, you can always add some salt to it. Okay, now, now that you see that this is all really, really hot, Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to turn up that temp. We're going to turn it on high. And we're going to put four cups of water in here. Okay, so there's four cups of water in there. All right, you're going to have your temperature on high now. Now you're going to mix all of this in. Okay. That, ladies and gentlemen, was the hardest part of making this meal. That was the most difficult part. Okay. Now we've got, let me see, we've got to put this, what else we got to put in there? Okay, we've got two more things to put in here. And I like to put this in here after I got the water in here. That way it doesn't disintegrate. This here is, you probably would not recognize it because what I do is I don't use a lot of this. This is cilantro, all right, cilantro. In Dominican Republic, we call this recao, right? And what I do is, is I get a bundle of this or a bushel of this, however you want to call it, and I put it in the freezer in a bag. And then when I need to use it, I just go in here and I cut a few pieces off with my scissors. All right? And that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is all, this here is also a must. You need to have cilantro in there. And the last thing that's going to go in here depending on whether you want to put it in there or not, you don't have to put this in there. I put in a little bit of mixed vegetables. Not too much, just a little bit. Okay, that's good right there. You can put in more if you want, but if you're putting in mixed vegetables that are frozen like these, you're going to want to probably give it an additional five minutes because these, depending on how much you put in, these vegetables are mostly water, okay? And you're going to have to increase your cooking time a little bit. 
so that your rice doesn't come out mushy. All right, so we got our mixed vegetables in there, and that is it with the exception of the rice. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and stir this around on high heat until it's almost ready to start boiling. And, and you all can tell when it's just about to start boiling. So look, look at how pretty this looks though. Look at the color. Isn't that a pretty color? It's nice and red. You know, it's not a deep red, but it's a nice red color. And if you could smell this, it smells really good. Now, some people like to add meat to this. I do that once in a while, but I don't really like to add meat to it because whenever I cook meat in there, like whole pieces, when I grew up, when I was growing up, my mom would make this dish and she would add like chicken legs and chicken thighs or like a whole chicken to this dish and it would come out great. Uh, but I've found that whenever I do that, the chicken has so much water in it, just like I said with the vegetables that some parts of the dish, the rice, comes out a little mushy, right? So I don't normally add meat to this rice dish. And if I do, it's not a lot of meat. It's just a little bit. Maybe a little bit of chicken breast or some small pieces of pork. So while this is heating up, we're going to go ahead and add our rice. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that may not know the rice to water ratio. So for every one cup of rice that you're trying to cook, you want to have, I would say, just a little less than two cups of water. So I would say probably about one and three quarters cup of water for every cup of rice. So it's almost two to one. However, since we have a little bit of uh, frozen vegetables in here and I added a little bit of uh, the moisture from the from the olives and the capers we're gonna go ahead and make this into a two and a half two and three quarter cup dish so I'm gonna put about two and three quarter cups of rice in here and if you see the old school people like my mom, she would never even measure the rice. So that right now we've got two cups. This is two cups. My mother would never even measure the rice. She would just put the rice in there and she would know that the, the distance between the top of the water or the juicier to where the rice meets, if it's about one to one and a half, something like this, enough of a distance, that that's enough, that she's put enough rice in there. That's how she would do it. So that's two and a half cups. That's about two and three quarter cups. And this is pretty important right here. You want to make sure that you stir this really well. Just stir it lightly as it's heating up. Because if you don't do that, if you don't keep stirring it lightly, you don't have to do a very good, very good, vigorous stir. Just a nice light stir to make sure that that rice is not going to burn on the bottom of your pot. All right, so what we're going to do here is that now we're going to uh, have a little bit of therapy. All right, this is the therapeutic part. This is where you have to have a little bit of patience. All right. And, and don't be fooled by thinking that there's too much liquid in there. Okay, so like I told you, I use probably about two and three quarter cups of rice to the four cups of water in addition to the vegetables and things that I have in here that already have water in them. Okay, don't be fooled by thinking that there's too much water in here because this rice is gonna absorb all of this water. Between the steam that escapes the pot and the water that this rice absorbs, it's gonna be just enough. I remember that when I started making this dish, I, I was gonna say years ago, but really it's been decades ago, that I would get scared and I would add more rice and then the rice would come out uncooked because it wasn't hydrated enough. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to keep stirring it until you see it starting to boil. It doesn't have to be a roaring boil. All you have to do is see those bubbles start coming up and it's almost there. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see the little bubbles here in the edges. Can you see those? Yeah, I think you can see them. I can see them on the camera. So you see, there we go. 
this right here now I can stop stirring it because I know that I'm almost done it's almost done there we go so you see that ladies and gentlemen that's it you are done that's how easy this is to make you are done all you got to do now is cover it take a look at your clock and now what I do is, is I take this and I move it to the I move it to my lowest burner on my stove and if you can see the time is 622 but since I'm pretty senile I'm gonna go ahead and put my timer on for 30 minutes and there we go ladies and gentlemen when you put the lid on that pot do not open it all right do not open it until your timer goes off I put that timer on for 30 minutes and sometimes I even like to let it go on for two or three minutes more all right just to make sure that it's perfectly cooked all right if you're impatient and you take that lid off halfway you're going to lose a lot of the heat that's in there and your rice may come out a little sticky and the rice I forgot to mention this but the rice that I'm using is not the sticky rice that I like to make this dish the best rice to use is long grain rice all right long grain white rice is the best rice to use for this dish whenever you use the sticky rice for this dish you know the cow roast rice that I'm always saying that I really like it comes out really sticky and you pretty much take it out in chunks and that's not the way that this dish was intended to be made okay so like I said ladies and gentlemen we are gonna leave this alone for another 28 minutes and 47 seconds okay and then we will revisit this when our timer goes off and now let's do some shout outs let's shout out some of our new subscribers this believe it or not is a fun thing that I like to do I love to shout out new subscribers and I actually have a computer here so that I can look you guys up uh, have you guys have it did you guys have a good week this week this was actually a pretty good week a, a short week because most people had a New Year's Day off so this was a short week and it still felt a little bit long for me because I had last week off of work and I'm the only one in my job that does what I do over there so whenever I get back off of vacation or any time off that I may have taken I have to catch up what didn't get done the week that I was there so it's very busy week for me all right so it's kind of a long week for me because I was very busy I know that usually when you're really busy time goes by quick but ladies and gentlemen my job is very boring okay however I am grateful for the job that I have and I'm hopeful that in a year and a half or two I won't have to punch a clock anymore but if you guys stick with me on this journey that we're that we started here a little over a year ago we'll see how that goes got a lot of plans I was talking to my son the other day and I told him I said you know what I probably have enough uh, enough uh, content for years because there's so many things that I want to do here on this property there's so many things that I want to do in turning this small piece of property into a small homestead homestead uh, with animals and a huge garden and just all of those things you know home, I have so many projects so I can't wait uh, till I can start sharing those things with you all and I hope that you all stick here with me so that we can share those experiences together so hey ladies and gentlemen let's start out some some subscriber shout out okay so if I already shouted you out last week you're gonna get a twofer okay if I don't shout you out and you subscribe within the last week it's more than likely because you have your settings on private and even though you're still subscribed to the channel I can't see you all right so you don't have to change your settings on private you know you don't have to change them off of private it's just I won't be able to see that you subscribe if uh, you have your settings on private okay so if I don't shout you out and you are a new subscriber that's why because I can't see that uh, you're subscribed but if that's the case thank you for subscribing anyways so let's start out with Buzzy's helper hey Buzz you got a new helper Buzzy's helper Sally 
Making Life Easier, Anak Kuli, Yahida, 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 I think, Yahida Barreto, Janet Johnson, Mildred Bailey, Kay Layton, a college kid. All right. Let us know what you're studying. Make sure you're studying something that you're going to be able to make a living. <laughs> I couldn't help it, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see who else. Veronica Christie, Sheila Wright, Ella Ingram, Lori, Rose, Shirlene, Jeanne, Cool Stuff, Rosalie, O Frugal One, <laughs> Carl S, Jane, East Texas Redneck Life Country Survival. Boy, that's a long one. I think next time I'm just going to say East Texas. <laughs> Jessica Wallace, Robert Nozawa, June Gerlich, Spark. That's the only thing I'm going to say on that one, Spark. Wanda, Oletta, Ruby Valley Real Estate, Jack Leber. Okay. Mary Hartman, Skeptic, Skeptic Lori, Lisa H. Let me turn to, oh, that's why I couldn't see. I had the darn, uh, the light on this down. Uh, Freaking Tastic, <laughs> Mr. Nick Nasty, Danelle Frost. Teresa Nicolas, LRT12345, 33rd, Narutoya, Westwind Survival. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Westwind Survival has 333 subscribers, so you might want to go check them out. I'll check them out later on. Uh, My Life in a Van also has 406 subscribers, so go check that out. That looks like an interesting one there, My Life in a Van. But if you see that I shout someone out, and I know that you can't see the screen, if you see that we have subscribers that have subscribers of their own, go check them out. And if you like their channel, by all means, support them. It's all about, it's, for, I've said this a hundred times, and I'll say this for you new subscribers. This is not about a competition, ladies and gentlemen. All right? Uh, prepping channels are not a competition as far as I'm concerned the more the merrier the more prepping channels out there the better it is for all of us okay uh, John crepe cupcake prepper pet lady Ashley Limbaugh Barbara Morris Dilo Joe D homesteader gal F for T Holzer S Holzer coast life Afro Kelbo, Raymond McNamara, Raymond McNamara, Inside Kate's Kitchen, Inside Kate's Kitchen has 500 plus subscribers, The Con 41, Michael Lopez, Gregory, NJS, Kenny, Tommy, The Green Eyed at 394, Skyler, Garvin Tina, Buckaroo, Teresa Stowe, Appalachian Woodcraft, Edad Martin, Carrie Newsom, Sonia Boo, Mr. Kinser01, and last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, this is a long one. Reselling on eBay with two funny chicks. Very nice, very nice. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you something new that I've been doing. Uh, I'm not sure if I did this on the premiere. I don't think I can add a card. But uh, for the last couple of videos, what I've been doing is if, if I find a channel that I think it's a good channel, I'll put a little card. Either I think it's on this side that it comes out. Let's see. Whoop. I think it comes out on this side of the screen. I'm not sure. But I put a little card on there and I say check out this channel. That way, if you guys want to check out that channel, you can. I figure that's a way of supporting some of our subscribers that have their own channels. And uh, I put it out there, and you guys can go check it out. So if during one of my videos you see that little card pop up up here, let's see, bam, right there. If you see it pop up there, it's because 
I'm shouting out a channel, all right? Uh, so, okay, so what we're going to do now, ladies and gentlemen, is this. Let me put this computer up here. Okay. Someone asked me a while back if I could show them how the French press works. And I figure, hey, what better time to do it in order to fill a little bit of time in the crack? Let's see, we've got 20 minutes left. What a better time to do it than now. So what I'm going to do real quick, though, is I'm going to let you guys watch me put a couple of these things away that have to be refrigerated so that they can be out of the way and then they can go back to their home where they belong. All right, I'm coming, ladies and gentlemen. And I forgot what subscriber it was that asked, but hopefully you're watching today. Let me put this away since I'm going in here anyways. So I've already got my French press ready to go. All right. I already put some coffee in there. And if I were to say I'm making a 16 ounce serving, okay, I probably put about two tablespoons of coffee in there, if not a little bit more. But you'll figure out how much you want to put in there uh, according to your taste. And then what I've got here is I had two cups of water boiling, all right, it's really hot. All you're going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is pour it in there. Now, some people like to stir it around and everything. I just let it sit there for a second or two. Well, not for a second, for maybe a minute or so. And I put my plunger in there. And this is what I call it, my screen. All you do is just put it in there nice and straight. And I let it sit there for a second. Now, as you can see, my little French press here, this is a bamboo top. And it broke off right there because I use it a lot. I use it almost every single day. And from the steam, the steam made it come apart. But this doesn't hurt anything. Some people take this off right here so that they can have a little bit more room to squeeze more coffee out of the grounds. Okay? So this, ladies and gentlemen, is an awesome little French press. I picked this up for like $13 in Amazon. And if you like, well, I will. I, I'm saying if you'd like, like you can answer me right now. I'll leave the link to this if you guys would like to purchase one. I've had this for almost a year now, and this thing is awesome. This is way better. This makes way better coffee, in my opinion, than the drip coffee machines. Okay. So all you want to do now is, is you just press this down nice and slow. Be patient, okay? Press this down nice and slow. And as you can see, I'm using one finger. doesn't take a lot of force. If you press down on it too hard and too fast some of the grains will escape through the side they'll just pop up because you're putting too much pressure in there that's it now if you want to get it stronger if you want to make it a little bit stronger you can bring this up okay and then press it down again or you can let it sit there for a while for five minutes or so and extract as much of that coffee flavor from the grounds as you can Ladies and gentlemen, that's how simple it is to make coffee on a French press. And the coffee that it makes is delicious. Now, I like to have my coffee with a little bit of milk. But I already ate dinner. And, uh, well, I didn't really eat dinner. I ate a little something after I got out of work. Because I knew it was going to take me a while to set all this up. So I don't really feel like having any dairy right now. I will taste a little bit of this, of this rice, though. So I can give you an honest... All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give you an honest assessment of how that rice tastes. But this coffee here, let me show you the coffee that I use. It's Cafe Bustelo. Those of you that have been here for a while know what it is. But this coffee is my favorite. This is excellent coffee. It's more of an espresso, and it works great on that French press. And let me take a little taste here. Mm. The thing about this coffee, ladies and gentlemen, is that it's not bitter. All right, it's not bitter. It's pretty smooth. 
And what I really like about it is, is that you can have it as a regular cup of coffee or you can put a little extra in there and it will taste like an espresso because it'll be a little bit thicker and a lot, a lot stronger. All right. Right here, the way that I've made it is probably about medium strength. You can see that. Let me see if you can see the color. So you see that color is really nice and rich and bold. So it's pretty good. Okay. I, I always enjoy drinking this coffee any time of the day. It doesn't have to be morning time. All right. So while that's working, let me put my cover on my rice. We got to keep the kitchen neat, ladies and gentlemen. I do not like a nasty, dirty kitchen, even though I've got some dishes in there that I have to, that I have to uh, clean up. My wife is house-sitting for our friends and she won't be back till tomorrow. So I have to get on those dishes before she gets back, okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to cover something with you all because I had a subscriber email me asking me to send him a link to an item that he wanted to purchase off of Amazon because the link wasn't in the description. Ladies and gentlemen, that's awesome. First of all, thank you very much for doing that. Uh, if you want to support the channel, please use my Amazon link. It's too easy. It's so easy. It doesn't cost you anymore. And it does support the channel. And it does allow me to gain more revenue for uh, doing giveaways. And this month has been a great month. You guys have really, really been helping out this month. And I am excited about the next giveaway. Uh, I'm not sure yet I'm, if I'm going to be able to do two of these. Because it's a pretty pricey giveaway. But... It's not really the price that matters. I just think it's such a great item to have for a prepper. I think it's such a great, not even for a prepper, for anyone. I think it's such a great item to have. And I think you're really going to enjoy what it is that I'm going to try to give away. Uh, also, we're getting close to 5,000 subscribers, ladies and gentlemen. I'm thinking about doing a live chat giveaway on the weekend following... Uh, our 5,000th subscriber so I think that will be a great thing too so stand by ladies and gentlemen uh, we're gonna be doing several giveaways this month I'm guessing I'm saying one two probably at least three this month that I've got planned to do giveaways uh, two of them will be uh, for the same item I'm hoping that I can give away two of those same items but uh, another one will be for when we reach our 5,000 subscriber and and I know I'm starting to babble here, but I have to say this because I really do mean it. Uh, and I want to thank you all. Uh, ask JT. JT is one of my uh, 100. She's in my 100 club. I know JT is. I know Salo Brena is. I think Keith uh, Keith B is. Keith S. I know uh, Brain Dead, uh, Hoot, Buzz. Uh, I believe Eddie is. I have a lot of people in my 100 club, but then again, a lot of the original 100 subscribers to the Alaska Prepper channel aren't here anymore. <laughs> so, uh, so some of them have decided to go on, which is fine. That's fine. That's fine. Um, but I want to thank you guys for being here with me. Uh, a little over a year ago, I was saying on one of my videos, I think it was my pantry video that I did, uh, that I was hoping that I maybe had a hundred subscribers in my first year and here we are uh, and the number is not the biggest deal the biggest deal to me is is that we're learning from each other and we're doing something that's positive with all of the negativity that goes on on the internet on YouTube our community is great and I truly appreciate everyone that makes this community what it is because I've always said it's not me. I provide the platform and you all are awesome. So thank you very much for being here with me. Uh, thank you for everything that you do to support the community and, and not just as in supporting me, but supporting one another, okay? Uh, I am very, very, very happy to say that we have uh, helped people here. We have, as a community, ladies and gentlemen, reach one, teach one, and repeat. As a community, we have helped people. We have actually 
gotten more than 10 people to start prepping, people that weren't prepping before. And uh, I think that's a great thing, all right? That's a great thing. So I wanted to go over a couple of comments that I have here. And I also wanted to go over, let's see if my computer will start here. I also wanted to go over a real quick story and ask you guys what you think. I know what I think, but I want to ask you what you think. I want to read this comment to you. All right. And this is from Scott DeSantis. All right, Scott. Scott is one of our new preppers. Scott is one of the people that started prepping from this channel. So, and these kind of comments make me very, very happy. Okay. Because like I've told all of you, I didn't do this to become rich. I, I'm not trying to become a YouTube millionaire. I'm not, I'm not trying to become a PewDiePie. <laughs> all right. So, uh, I, I'm doing this because I feel that, uh, you know, people can benefit from the message, you know, mainly. And Scott says, AP, you know you started me prepping. First of all, I understand what he's saying, but it wasn't me. It was us, okay? Uh, it was us who did it. And he says here, the great advice that I have received from this channel has been very valuable. And that's great, you know. That is... That, ladies and gentlemen, is a beautiful thing. It really is. You know why? Number one, because Scott started prepping. He saw the need. He saw that there was a need to prep. Because he came to this crazy guy's channel. And then he saw that the community there is a great community. And then he realized that the things that were being spoken, all right, and the things that were being commented on and shared back and forth by the people in the community that it made sense to start prepping and that's a great thing All right. uh, this is a great question and I wanted to cover this question is from is from Glenn Aliyah 07 so Glenn Aliyah 07 and the question is this I have a question for you. We currently have several gas generators. However, with some situations, gas may be unavailable or limited. So we are looking at a third source of energy or at least a way to heat our home. Would you recommend a low, sorry, would you recommend a large solar generator or a wood burner? We live in a rural area and own some property. Wood would be no problem. However, thinking about calories, that would be... Oh, thinking about calories that would be put out by shopping wood, okay? In a long-term outage or paying more money by just putting solar panels outside has me weighing both options. We have no natural gas where we live and use heating oil. Any suggestions are welcome. So I'm going to call you Glenn, okay? Glenalia? Glenn. So Glenn, the question that Glenn is asking is, is that right now their main source of heat, same as mine, is heating oil, okay? So the fuel that I use to heat is heating oil, same as Glenn. Glenn is asking if I would recommend, or I can, I don't like to recommend, I like to say what I would do because if I'm not there physically seeing what you're talking about, I can't say with certainty that that's what I would do, okay? But from what Glenn is saying here is, is what he's asking is, does he recommend, does he think that I should put in a solar panel, if it were me doing this, a solar array to provide him energy that would allow him, allow him to heat his home? Or would, he go, would I go with wood? Okay, so I'm not going to read my answer to him. But I am going to go ahead and I, I'm pretty sure that I'll be pretty close to what I said. All right, not verbatim. So I would definitely go with wood. All right. One of the concerns that Glenn has with using wood as a heat source is that if gasoline is not available, how is he going to ch how is he going to cut his wood? Uh, he can certainly use an axe to cut the wood, but that would take a lot of energy. A lot of calories would be used in order to cut that wood. So my recommendation is, my, my main recommendation would be I would go with both. If, if I could afford it, I would get a big solar array with a solar generator 
and I would get a wood stove to heat the home okay if I cannot afford both then what I would do is this I would go with wood and I'm gonna tell you why I would go with wood first of all you're right Glenn um, you are gonna use a lot of calories chopping wood if you use an axe all right and I'm assuming that you're saying that you will not have a chainsaw because you won't have gasoline, which is a good point. But there is what's called a silky saw, all right? Now, silky saws are awesome, okay? And you know what? I am going to leave a link to the silky saw. I, I've, I've got a link to one of the smaller silky saws. They're probably about 14 inches. The actual saw is about 14 inches. I'd show it to you, but it's in my car but or in my truck but I'm gonna leave a link to the short one it's down there I'll leave it pinned up here all right so I'm gonna leave a few Amazon links on a pin comment uh, with the coffee press and a couple of silky saws one that's a smaller one which is like the one I have and a bigger one that you can actually use to cut down a tree all right that silky saw is incredible it is effortless and I personally don't think that you have to use a lot of energy to use that silky saw because it is so very well constructed. So I'm going to leave a link to that. So what I would do is if I could afford it, I would get both both things, a solar array with a, with a solar generator and a wood stove. If I could only choose one of those two things, I would choose the wood stove and I would throw in a nice silky saw with it and a nice axe to go with it of course with the things that you need to cut wood and if you say that you have a lot of wood in your area you probably already know how to chop down trees and all that kind of things but you can take down a big tree with a silky saw right? and it doesn't use a lot of energy okay it might take a little bit of time but you're not going to be expending that many calories okay so that is what I would do now what about for for lighting and things like that if you don't have a solar array and you want to be able to produce electricity with your wood stove, you can. They sell some things out there that have what's called a thermal pile in it. So have you ever seen the little fans that you put on top of a wood stove that they spin? You don't need to hook them up to anything. They don't need any electricity from an outside source because it has what's called a small thermal pile and that thermal pile what it does is when it heats up to a certain temperature it produces a small amount of electricity which is enough to run that fan well they have little gadgets and I don't know what they're called but they have gadgets that you can put on a wood stove that can actually produce enough electricity to maybe light a, an LED bulb or something like that or to maybe power up your computer or your tablet or something like that that's something you have to look into I know they have it because I've seen it and it's actually in my Amazon wish list okay so you can look into doing things like that as well all right so Glenn I hope that I answered your question uh, if anyone has any recommendations for Glenn please leave it on the comments okay and if you're watching Glenn thank you very much for the question that's what this is all about ladies and gentlemen a question like Glenn's may be the same question that a hundred people had but just didn't want to ask and maybe now that that those people are listening they can have that question answered and it can help them and not only because it's being answered by me but leave some comments on what recommendations you would have for Glenn oh wow I've been man I sure can I sure can blab. I can, I can blab with the best of them. We're, we're only got like two minutes left before uh, this is going to go off, before it beeps. So I wanted to go over a quick article with you guys today. I want you to let me know what you guys think about this article, all right? So I'm going to read it. So I'm going to turn away from the camera here for a little bit. Well, here we go. This is my, my daughter's. All right. <laughs> this is my daughter's computer. Okay. I'm recording with mine. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Okay. So <laughs> that's so funny. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, I want to go ahead and read you this article real quick. Now the rice is going to beep here in about a minute, but I'm just going to turn the timer off and I'm going to let it go for about two or three minutes. All right. So now the title of this article all right is 
TSA screeners or TSA agents working without pay are calling out sick. I wonder why. You know how a lot of people say that sometimes th that if there were a, a, an SHTF that the police would be uh, cracking down on people and, and going house to house and stuff like that. Ladies and gentlemen, if you ain't getting paid, you ain't going to work. All right. No matter how committed you are, if you have a job and you're taking care of a family, if that job stops paying you, you're not going to go to work. All right. So some people may still go to work for a little bit, but eventually they're not going to go to work anymore. So, and this is because of the government shutdown. So ladies and gentlemen, honestly, oh, there we go. Stop. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, answer this question if you wouldn't mind. Have any of you been personally affected? Not any of you that may work for the government, that, that for a department of the government that has actually shut down and sent you home, all right? But have any of you been affected by the government shutdown? Meaning, are there any services that you're missing? That you're like, man, I wish I wish the government wasn't shut down. Because I really, I really want to be able to get into Yosemite Park. And I can't. Alright? Have any of you been affected by the government shutdown? Let us know. So it says here, Transportation Security Administration workers at several major airports around the country working without pay since the partial government shutdown began on December 22nd have been calling in sick and in heightened numbers according to union and airport management officials. And then I'll just read this one here because it's going to have the same thing for different airports. It says here, more than 150 TSA employees, many of them responsible for screening passengers, called in on Friday morning at Kennedy International Airport in New York to say they were ill or otherwise unable to work their shifts, according to a union official with knowledge, knowledge of the situation. So, putting it simply, people are not going to work because people are not getting paid. And I can't see that many people would go to work if they weren't getting paid, right? So, but the question that I have is, how many of you have been affected by the government shutdown? I've always said that a government shutdown doesn't mean that the government is not getting revenue. The government is still getting tax revenue. It's that the government can't borrow more money. That's what a government shutdown is. It's when they can't pass a law to borrow more money. Because that's what it is. Right now they want to pass whatever whatever uh, appropriations it is that they want to pass, they want to pass them so that they can say, okay, we're going to spend money on this and this and that. But the only reason they're passing them is because they have to borrow the money to do so. All right. So right now, the government can't borrow any more money. And if any of you go to the, national U the U.S. National Debt Clock, you'll see that it's still ticking up. But the reason it's still ticking up is because whether we can borrow more money or not, our interest is still rolling over, okay? So a government shutdown, as far as I know, or as far as I'm concerned, and as, if, if somebody out there knows better, please let us know. I, I, I love to get educated on these types of things. But as far as I know, what a government shutdown means is, is that we can no longer borrow money. So right now, we can't borrow any more money until they pass whatever bill or whatever appropriation, whatever it may be that they need to pass in order for those parts of the governments to be funded, okay? And uh, like I said, if you go to the national debt clock, you'll see that it's still ticking upward, but that's because our interest is rolling over. So ladies and gentlemen, this is not going to last too long, all right? This, uh, <sighs> this utopia that we've been living under for all of these years, and what I mean by utopia is this financial system that we've been living in since really 1971 it's not gonna last too much longer and unfortunately a lot of people will get hurt okay a lot of people have been warned and they just have not heeded the warnings and a lot of people have been warned and they have and they've prepared okay uh, so hopefully if you are a new subscriber and you're not prepping and you're not in the know about why your dollars that are in the bank are not really there 
and why they are not really yours, take a look at some of my past videos where I explain to you why it is that the money that's in the bank that you think is yours because you're the one that put it there, it's not really yours. And in addition to that, it doesn't really exist. So you work to earn wealth, to make money, and then you take that wealth that you earn from your job and your labor and you put it in a banking institution and as soon as you put that money in there you no longer have a legal right to that money all right look it up ladies and gentlemen it's law it's actually a law that says what i said just in a lot more fancier words all right all right guess what it's time to take a look at this hopefully it came out good I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera down so you guys can take a look. You want to see me open it. All right, there. That looks pretty good. Oh, it looks pretty good. So what's going to happen is when you open this, you'll see that all of the olives and all of the uh, green, you know, all of the vegetables and stuff. So you have to mix this up. Now, when you mix this up, do not push down on it. Fold it, okay? But you'll see that the rice... It's cooked really well. Oh yeah, it looks really good. All right, you don't want to be in a hurry in this part, ladies and gentlemen. You've already done all this stuff. You know, you don't want to really ruin it. But as you can see, this rice is nice and fluffy. All right, and the vegetables turned out really well. All right, and I'm gonna put a little bit of this in a bowl so you guys can see what it looks like in a bowl. But this is what it looks like when it's cooked. And it actually smells really, really good. Okay. I think this is going to be a really good one. And look at all the rice that that made, ladies and gentlemen. That was about two and three quarter cups of rice. So if you want to gauge how much rice uh, or how much a 50 pound bag of rice will feed you, this was two and three quarter cups of rice. So this is just a little bit over a pound of rice if not probably just roughly about a pound of rice okay so I'm gonna go ahead and put this here let me go ahead and put a little bit in this bowl so that's a tiny bit of water but that won't hurt I want to put a little bit in this bowl that way is where you guys can see what it looks like man it looks really good it looks really really good uh oh let me put that right here got a little bit of a root there okay let me go ahead and cover this up so it doesn't dry up and I can actually use the same spoon that I used before but here it is ladies and gentlemen this is what it looks like and it's actually it actually came out really nice okay I'm gonna take a little bit of it so I can tell you what flavors I'm tasting even though I've had this hundreds of times in my lifetime oh it's, it, it smells really good and don't be afraid of these olives ladies and gentlemen unless you really don't like olives but don't be afraid of these olives these olives when they cook in there they they taste great and I'm still spreading it around a little bit because I don't want to burn my tongue all right let's see I'm actually going to get a little bit more for after I get done with the video. I'm going to go eat this. Ladies and gentlemen, please try this. Man, this is delicious. I've eaten this same dish in my life, I want to say hundreds of times. And every time I make it, I always tell myself, man, this is so good. It really is. The... the it's got so many layers of flavors. I just heard my dog out there. Probably the Amazon guy or the UPS guy dropping something off. This has so many layers of flavors in there. It's just really, really good. Mmm. Outstanding. 
If any of you make that, please let me know how you like it. Please let me know how you like it. Because that is really good. Ladies and gentlemen, I think this is it. No, oh, let me see. Hopefully my computer didn't turn off. I think this is it. We are just over an hour. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and sign off so that I can upload this. Because the last time I uploaded a video, the last one, it must have taken like three hours to upload. So thank you very much for joining me. I'm going to leave the links to those uh, items in uh, a comment that I'm going to pin to the top. So if any of you are interested in the Silky Saw or the French Press, take a look at them. Uh, however, if you're going to do any Amazon shopping anyways, please use my link. I'd appreciate it. It truly does support the channel. And uh, I'm not going to go over all the ways that you can support the channel. I've go, gone over that plenty. Uh, I'll probably try to just keep that to every three or four videos, okay, so that you guys can know. But I truly do appreciate your support. So thank you very much for everything. I hope you had a great week. I hope you, I hope you learn how to make some Dominican rice on this video because that's good stuff right there the alaska prepper will be finishing that bowl of rice okay uh and ladies and gentlemen again thank you very much for joining me uh remember to be good to each other when good people do good things good things happen remember to reach one teach one and repeat if we all did this the world would be a better place and you know that it will be a better place many blessings to all of you and your families this is alaska prepper and i'm out god bless